everyone uh, for being here. Yeah, I'm Dan Song, a professor from UC Berkeley. Today I will talk about security, privacy, and democratization challenges and future directions for machine learning systems beyond scalability. Machine learning systems is the actual system that actually embodies and enables machine learning and uses intelligence to provide various functionalities such as decision making to empower real world applications. There are many important and exciting questions at the intersection between machine learning and systems. So most of the conversation at this workshop I think focuses on um, in, uh, improving the performance and scalability issues. However, there are also many other important goals that machine learning systems need to achieve. So in this talk, I will cover several other important goals for machine learning systems, including security, privacy, and democratization. Okay, so first, as we all know that deep learning has really been making great advancement. For example, AlphaGo has won over world champions in Go, and also now we see that deep learning is empowering everyday products. However, as we see the exponential growth of the power of deep learning uh, and its applications, also at the same time we are seeing another trend, a trend um, in the security landscape, where we see that attacks are unfortunately increasing in scale and sophistication. Here are just a few examples. So recently we have seen one of the largest distributed denial of service attacks on the internet uh, launched by uh, the Mirabots, which consists of over 400,000 uh, uh, compromised bots over 160 countries. And these are actually mainly uh, composed of IoT devices such as security cameras, webcams, and home routers. And also we've seen a WannaCry, which is one of the largest ransom breakouts. Uh, it infected over 200,000 machines across 150 countries in just a few days. And we continue to see the biggest data breaches of the 20th, uh, 21st century. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, the users here are in millions. Um, I, I won't name the names. <laughs> And also we are seeing attacks uh, entering new uh, landscape, uh, including the uh, power grid and also sophisticated banking systems. This is all the reason why we particularly need to care about security when we talk about, uh, when we talk about machine learning systems. And we need to think about machine learning systems in the presence of attackers. And there are many reasons for this. First, history has always shown that the attacker always follows the footsteps of new technology development, or sometimes even leads it. And also this time the stakes is even higher. As AI can choose more and more systems, attackers will have higher and higher incentives to attack them. And also as AI becomes more and more capable, the consequence of misuse by attackers will also become more and more severe. So when we talk about machine learning systems in the presence of attackers, uh, we need to consider two uh, types of issues. One is how attackers can attack AI, can attack the machine learning systems. In here, there are a number of um, uh, properties that the attackers can try to violate. One is integrity. For example, attacker can try to cause the learning system to not produce the correct or intended results. Or the attacker can even cause the learning system to produce targeted outcome designed by the attacker for targeted attacks. And also attacker can try to break the confidentiality and privacy to try to learn sensitive information about individuals from the learned models and the machine learning systems. To address all these problems, we need to have stronger security and privacy for the learning systems. The other side is that the attacker not only can try to attack the AI system, uh, it can also try to use AI to, uh, to, to try to misuse AI. In particular, the attacker can try to misuse AI to attack other systems. For example, for um, finding vulnerabilities in other systems and devise new attacks. To address these problems, we need better security in other systems. So in the remaining of the, talks, uh, of the talk, let me uh, just give you a few examples of some of these issues. So first, let's look at the integrity side, how the attacker can try to attack uh, a learning system to now produce the intended or correct results. 
So despite the fact that deep learning has made a great advancement and is the uh, state, uh, state of the art uh, for many applications, however, on the other hand, deep learning systems are unfortunately very, very easily fooled. Here's an example, and this is a work done by uh, researchers uh, from Google, uh, Sajiti and uh, Ian Goodfellow and so on. And on this, um, uh, on the slide here, what you can see is that for the left, uh, for the left column, uh, these are the um, original images, which are correctly classified by the um, deep learning system, the image classifier. And the middle columns you see here, these are called adversary perturbations. Uh, and these are perturbations that are specifically crafted by the attacker. And here, they are magnified so you can see them. Without the mag magnification, they are actually really small. It's very hard to see with human eyes. And the right-hand side columns, these are called adversary examples. So they are the original images with the adversary perturbation added to them. So the interesting part here is that, as you can see, for human eyes, uh, between the original images and the adversary ex examples, they look almost identical. It's very difficult for human eyes to distinguish them. But however, to the, uh, the machine learning systems, in this case, these adversary examples, they are specifically crafted by the attacker and cause the, uh, the image classifier, in this case, to misclassify. And in this case, they are all misclassified as ostrich. So uh, one question is, why should we care about this? So let's uh, envision the scenario of self-driving cars. Uh, for a self-driving car, as it drives around, it needs to observe its environment. For example, to recognize traffic signs so that you can, um, uh, so that the car can then um, make the correct decision. Here are some uh, photos taken from stop signs in Berkeley. And actually, as you can see on the stop signs, there are small marks uh, that people put on. But however, as you can see, to humans, you can recognize these uh, traffic signs with no problems. And you still record them, uh, recognize them as stop signs. However, what if the attackers actually put some small modifications on the uh, traffic sign, such that to humans, it will not make any difference, but it will actually fool uh, the self-driving car's vision system into recognize it as other signs. So the question is essentially whether we can actually uh, make this possible, whether this is feasible in the physical world, whether we can create effective adversary examples that in this case actually even remain effective under different viewing distances, angles, and other conditions in actual real physical world. So this is one of our recent work with our collaborators um, showing that for the first time, uh, for uh, such a large scale uh, that uh, we can actually uh, essentially build these adversary examples that remain uh, effective to different viewing conditions uh, such as distances and angles in real physical worlds. And so these are essentially photos of actual real world uh, traffic signs that have been modified uh, uh, with the adversary perturbations added to them and in this case uh, uh, they are all cause the uh, image classifier to misclassify them into like speed limit sign. And, uh, and just to show you an actual uh, example, uh, so he, what you will see here is an actual video uh, for this uh, adversary example in the physical world. Uh, in a moment I'll start the video. What you will see is uh, the two frames side by side. On the left hand side, uh, what you'll see is actually it's a, a real world traffic sign but with the adversary perturbation added by us. And the right hand side is the original traffic sign without modification. And at the bottom you will see the prediction labels by the image classification system as the, um, as the system drives. So what you can see here is that um, the, uh, the adversary example essentially causes the, um, the image classification system to misclassify um, as, the, as the car continues to drive towards the traffic sign and for the most part it actually gets misclassified as speed limit sign 
And whereas for the original traffic sign, the image classification does perfectly. So here's an example showing that how adversary examples, especially in this case in the physical world, can cause a real issue. And we have done a lot of study um, in uh, the issue of adversary examples uh, beyond just image classification and beyond just uh, convolution uh, neural networks. And unfortunately, the result is uh, adversary examples is not just limited to, uh, to vision, uh, and also it's not just limited uh, to specific types of uh, deep learning models. In fact, adversary examples are prevalent in deep learning systems. So due to time limit, I won't actually give you all the you know, examples, but here I'll just show you a, a couple other examples. The first one is the uh, system called uh, Visual q and uh, Visual q and is about uh, giving an image and also a question. In this case, uh, what is the woman feeding the giraffe? And um, we can then build a neural network system to try to uh, answer the question uh, you know, by looking at the image. And in this case, the, the question is carrot. And uh, there has been a number of uh, deep learning systems developed to, uh, to answer, uh, to, to address this task. And some of the state-of-the-art state approaches are developed at UC Berkeley. And in this work, we look at these um, state-of-the-art uh, system to look at whether uh, they can also be fooled by adversary examples. Um, so here are some uh, examples. Uh, so here, this is uh, the original uh, benign image, and the question is where's the plane? And in this case, the state of the arts um, uh, machine learning model uh, gave the correct answer, wrong way. And here, let's say we want to actually generate an adversarial uh, example of this benign image, and we want to fool the visual QA system, and in particular, for a targeted answer, sky. And here's the example of the generated adversary examples. And as you can see, to human eyes, they are very close to the original image. But when you feed this to the visual QA uh, system, it will give the targeted uh, answer sky. And here's another example. <coughs> the question is how many cats uh, are there? And for the benign image, the VQE model gives the right answer, one. And here we want to generate an adversarial example of the original image to fool the VQE system to give the target two. And again, here's the generated adversarial example. And when you feed this to the VQE system, it gives the, the target answer two. Even though to humans, of course, this is very clear that there's only one cat. And adversary examples goes beyond and deep learning, it also uh, can easily fool deep reinforcement learning systems as well. So here's an example. What you see, these are the original frame, uh, video frames for uh, playing the game Pong. And uh, the right hand side, the green pedal, is a trained, deep, uh, trained uh, agent using deep reinforcement learning. And as you can see, see here, it actually plays very well. And in fact, it's at the uh, training stage that actually reaches, uh, after it actually has reached the uh, max uh, reward. And we wanted to investigate how adversary example can affect uh, such a well-trained uh, uh, agent. So what you see in the video frame, these are uh, the video frame that actually with um, adversary perturbation added to them. And again, to human eyes, as you can see, that you cannot distinguish between the two uh, frames at all. Uh, so it almost look uh, ju just like uh, right, the adversary perturbation under this is very, very little. But however, in this case, the, uh, the trained agent is completely fooled and essentially reaches the minimal reward. Um, so this is a really important area adversary examples uh, affects pretty much all the deep learning systems that we have studied. Um, and the, in the past uh, year or so, there, have, there has been numerous defenses proposed. Actually, on our archive, now I think there are over like hundreds of papers that have been uh, posted just within the last year on proposing different types of defenses. 
However, unfortunately today, still we do not have sufficient defense. Strong adaptive detector, uh, attacker today can easily evade today's defense. And there are a number of works um, that demonstrating some of the proposed, uh, recently proposed defense mechanisms are insufficient. And also what I have shown you here so far is just the tip of the iceberg. And adversary examples is in the domain of uh, what's called adversary machine learning, which studies uh, learning in the pres presence of adversaries. And adversary examples happens at the inference time, where the adversary example tries to fool the learning system to make the wrong decision. And also uh, attacks can happen at training time as well, and these are called the data poisoning attacks, where attacker can try to poison the data sets, uh, for example, uh, poison the data labels to fool the learning system to learn the wrong model. And in general, adversary machine learning is particularly important for security critical systems. I strongly believe that security will be one of the biggest challenges in deploying AI. And when we talk about security of the learning system, there are a number of, uh, uh, we need to look at the security of a learning system at several different levels at the software level, the learning level, and the distributed level. So first, um, for security at the software level, essentially the goal is that we want to ensure there's no software vulnerabilities, such as buffer overflow or access control issues, that enable the attacker to take control of the learning system through exploiting software vulnerabilities. Even though this is still a really challenging problem, but at least the good news is that in the security community, we have been studying this question for the past decades and have developed a lot, uh, a lot of uh, different techniques and approaches to help address this problem. The bigger and the really uh, exciting open questions are at the learning level and the distributed level. There are many challenges for security at the learning level. So one, for example, when we evaluate the learning system, we need to evaluate it under adversary events, not just normal events. For example, this is the distinction between regression testing versus security testing. And also we need to uh, be able to reason about complex, non-symbolic programs. Especially in the systems community and uh, uh, overall, we are very familiar uh, with uh, what's called symbolic programs, such as operating systems, file systems, compilers, and so on. And for these programs, the semantics are defined by logic. And we've had uh, decades of techniques and tools developed for logic and symbolic reasoning. And in fact, uh, I would say that we have actually entered the era of formally verified systems. And we actually have a number of formally verified systems, including microkernel, operating systems, file systems, and so on. Uh, with the formula verified correctness and security properties. And largely thanks to the powerful formal verification tools and dedicated team in the past uh, years and decades. However, when we um, talk about machine learning systems, unfortunately, we have, um, uh, even though we still have challenges for doing the uh, reasoning for, uh, and for verification for symbolic programs, but when it comes to at least there, we've had decades of experience and techniques and tools developed. But however, for learning systems, these are largely non-symbolic uh, programs, and we have very little experience as a whole community to, um, to even you know, define or uh, address many of the open challenges. So for example, for, for such systems, often we don't even have precisely specified properties and goals. For example, uh, let's say the goal is uh, for a self-driving car now to drive over a pedestrian. But then the question is how do we even define pedestrian? We don't have a mathematical definition of a pedestrian. And also we don't have good understanding of how the learning systems work. And unfortunately, symbolic, uh, traditional symbolic reasoning techniques uh, actually have, uh, uh, you know, have limited applicability here. And also, we need to uh, be able to design new architectures and approaches with a stronger generalization and security guarantees. We, um, and of course, this is a grand goal and has a lot of challenges. So I'll just briefly mention one of our recent work in a very limited application domain uh, to try to, as a first step towards this goal. 
So this limited domain is in program synthesis, where we try to uh, use deep learning to teach computers how to write code. And uh, in this particular uh, a neural program synthesis domain, we proposed uh, a new approach uh, by introducing recursion into uh, neural programs and for the first time learn uh, recursive neural programs and using this approach we are able for the first time to provide a proof of, uh, to, to learn pr uh, neural programs with perfect generalization, generalization and provide a proof of perfect generalization once the uh, learned program uh, passes uh, a verification procedure. And the work has won the best paper award at ICLR, the uh, conference, uh, top deep learning conference last year. And from this example, what we have learned is that program architectures uh, do impact generalization and provability. And recursive modular neural architectures uh, are easier to reason, prove, and generalize. And our work uh, was only in a limited application domain. And it's important for us to explore new architectures and approaches uh, to enable strong generalization and security properties for broader tasks. For example, one domain uh, we are investigating in is um, extend this work to the robotics domain. And also there are other challenges. For example, we need to reason about how to compose components. When we build large complex systems, it requires compositional reasoning where each component provides an abstraction and we can use hierarchical and compositional reasoning to try to prove properties of the whole system. The question is how can we do abstraction and compositional reasoning for non-symbolic programs? And the list, the list actually is very long. I actually won't have time to talk about all the open challenges on the list. And um, and also there are open challenges at the distributed level as well for security of learning systems. At the distributed level, each agent um, makes low, uh, local decisions. The question is how can we make sure that uh, making, local, uh, making good local decisions can achieve good global decisions? So that's so far I've talked about the first aspects, how attacker can try to attack AI and machine learning systems by uh, breaking the integrity of the decision and causing the learning system to now produce the intended uh, or correct results. So next, I will also briefly uh, talk about uh, the, uh, another property, confidentiality and privacy, uh, how the attacker can try to learn sensitive information about the individuals and what we can do about it. So today, largely, uh, the, uh, the framework for ana data analytics and machine learning uh, looks as the following. Right, so we have the data owners where the data is being collected, and then we have some analysts which tries to write some data analytics or machine learning program to analyze the data. And the analytics and machine learning uh, program will run on some computation infrastructure, which in the end uh, produce the results. However, unfortunately, the current framework for doing uh, data analytics and machine learning are largely insufficient for their uh, security and privacy protection for sensitive data. So when we look at the current framework, there are a number of threats uh, that um, can, uh, a number of threats for uh, data uh, security and privacy. So first, the analytics and machine learning program can be untrusted. So for example, uh, it could be uh, actually um, a piece of malicious code, or the analyst is an, insider, uh, uh, is an insider attack who actually particularly tried to uh, write uh, some malicious analysis on machine learning program to try to steal user sensitive information. And uh, all the analysts can be compromised and uh, uh, right, being misused by the attacker. And also, the computation infrastructure may be untrusted as well. So for example, an attacker could have uh, compromised the computation uh, infrastructure. So as the uh, data analytics and machine learning being conducted on the compromised computation infrastructure, the attacker can easily steal user-sensitive information. And finally, the final results uh, can have 
uh, privacy risks as well. Because the final results is actually computed from users' sensitive data, and hence the, uh, the computer results can naturally leak uh, users' sensitive data. So as one example, in our uh, recent work, we actually have showed that uh, as you use deep learning to, for example, train a language model, an attacker can actually, uh, from this language model, try to infer and learn uh, sensitive information about the user, for example, including uh, recovering uh, social security numbers and credit card numbers. So uh, in order to address these challenges, we need to develop uh, different types of techniques and approaches to, uh, uh, to address all these different types of threats. Um, so uh, I'll just, uh, there, uh, there has been a huge body of work in this area. I'll just briefly talk about some of our work in the space, uh, some of our recent work. So uh, in our recent work, we have developed a, different, uh, a suite of different techniques and approaches to address these different threats. To address the uh, uh, threats from sensitive results, we have developed new techniques for, uh, use, uh, for uh, practical uh, differential privacy. And for uh, addressing the threats of untrusted program, we have developed uh, some uh, recent uh, uh, work on program rewriting and verification, such that even when the original uh, program is untrusted, we can actually through writing to enforce the desired and security, uh, to enforce the desired security and privacy policies. And to address the threats of untrusted infrastructure, we can use secure computation, um, such as uh, crypto techniques, as well as uh, secure hardware uh, techniques. So by putting all these techniques together, uh, we are developing a platform for secure, privacy-preserving shared learning. So in this case, uh, we are not changing the workflow. So there's, uh, the user's data now is being stored in encrypted form, and the untrusted analysts can still write their original uh, data, analy data analytics and machine learning pipelines. And our system option in this case will then automatically rewrite the data analytics and machine learning pipeline with, uh, uh, with the embedded privacy mechanisms and uh, by utilizing a privacy aware type, uh, aware type system so that we can ensure that the, the rewritten uh, data, uh, uh, the rewritten uh, pipeline will actually satisfy uh, differential privacy as well as uh, other desired security and privacy policies. And then the rewritten um, pipeline can then be run on the computation infrastructure using, for example, secure hardware such as SGX uh, for secure computation. And then in the end, uh, it will output the uh, differentially private results. In this case, the user now do not need to trust either the, uh, the analyst for the untrusted uh, analytics or machine learning pipelines, nor does it need to trust the computation infrastructure, which may be compromised. And uh, part of this work has been deployed at uh, Wooper uh, to help with uh, uh, providing differentially private uh, uh, internal data analytics for the analysts and also helping with uh, their GDPR compliance. And also there's a huge future plan on how to enable such, uh, using the system to enable public facing systems as well. And part of the system has been open sourced. Okay, so, so far we've looked at the first uh, part of uh, machine learning systems in the presence of an attacker, how the attacker can try to attack AI, and some example challenges and also potential future directions. Um, it's also very important as a whole community to, uh, to keep in mind the other aspect as well, that as uh, AI becomes more and more powerful, at the same time, attacker will try to misuse AI to attack other systems. And in fact, there has been real world evidence to uh, demonstrate that uh, deep learning systems uh, has, uh, has been empowered, uh, can, can empower uh, more effective bug finding 
and also deep learning can help empower more effective phishing attacks. And also we see real world evidence where attackers are actually using uh, these advancements in uh, deep learning based computer vision systems to actually solve captures. Okay, so, so far what we have seen uh, is uh, I have covered uh, besides beyond performance and scalability, it's really important for us to look at some of these additional goals for machine learning systems, including security and privacy. But however, um, there are even, um, right, uh, uh, there are other challenges and goals uh, as well that potentially may be even more important than all of these. So I want to just take a few minutes to talk about this um, additional challenge uh, that I'm really excited about. Um, so this starts with a quote. <laughs> so the quote here goes that even Putin has recognized that whoever controls and leads a, uh, in AI will rule the world. Okay, so then the question is, who is controlling the AI today? If we look at the status quo today, um, I think the event also has uh, participants from uh, uh, these, uh, I, I won't name the companies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yes, a number of uh, big companies have been trying to, uh, have, been, uh, uh, right, have been collecting users data and try to build, for example, personal profiles uh, for users, and and to, oh, I think my timer was different. Okay, I <laughs> see. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> right. Uh, okay, uh, and try to build personal profiles, and then uh, use these personal profiles to serve users. Um, so, right, going forward, uh, these personal profiles are uh, the, the personal assistants that. Uh, these companies built for users will become more and more intelligent. So in the future, who will be run? Uh, and already, they are giving us um, driving directions. They can give us job advices or even life plan. <laughs> so, so right, so the question is essentially who will be running our lives? And, and despite the fact that they, that they are <laughs> uh, trying to provide good service to the users, but ultimately, their goal is to maximize revenue. The question is, is there a different future? Is there a different future where users actually have control of their own, their own data? And, and now we can build agents, intelligent agents and virtual assistants that are actually under the user control. They can actually use services provided by other companies at their will, and instead of maximizing um, Companies' revenue, uh, they, their goal is to maximize user value. Uh, towards this goal, uh, we have a new project called AI Eden um, on blockchain for democratizing AI. So, this is a huge topic. Uh, I was told that I only have one minute left. <laughs> Although, on my timer, it shows seven minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, so this is a huge topic. I won't have time to do it justice. Uh, I won't have enough time to do it justice. So here I'll just give you a quick glimpse of parts of a system that we have been developing. So, uh, so in here, we essentially are building a blockchain uh, with uh, private smart contracts. Uh, in the private smart contracts, well, first of all, it provides rich functionalities, including, for example, machine learning, model training, and serving. And it can be a run in a secure execution environment to ensure secure computation by utilizing trusted hardware and secure multi-party computation. And the, the uh, user's data and the model access will be dictated by the smart contract. For example, users, as they contribute data to a private smart contract, it can, uh, the private smart contract may say that the, the data will only be used for training this machine learning model, will not be used for anything else. And also, users who contributed valuable data may also get a share of the profits or benefits in the end once the model is trained and uh, being served. And this way, it gives uh, 
essentially the alignment of economic incentives to all the parties, to the users, to the developers who develop the private smart contract, and so on. And also this expose a microservice architecture to users and other smart contracts. So with this, we can actually build a blockchain of intelligent private smart contracts that enable us in, enable users to actually uh, users and the companies to pull together data to build machine learning models and AI agents to then actually be under the control of users and dictated by the private smart contract. And we actually have already built some prototype in uh, different uh, application segments, including financial services, IoT, and also healthcare. Overall, there are a lot of really uh, important and exciting open questions and challenges at the intersection between machine learning systems and security. For example, how to better understand what security means for AI and learning systems, how to detect when a learning system has been fooled or compromised, how to build more resilient learning systems with stronger guarantees, how to build privacy-preserving learning systems, and also how to democratize AI. So in this talk, we have seen that besides performance and scalability, there are many other important uh, challenges and goals for machine learning systems, including security, privacy, and democratization. So I hope that um, uh, this talk will help the community to uh, also um, pay more attention to these other important goals uh, of machine learning uh, systems. And then, um, as Steve Jobs used to say, there's one more thing. <laughs> so, so here, I actually don't have time to talk about this. This actually uh, can be an entirely separate talk by itself. Um, but I am really uh, excited about this direction. Uh, so I wanted to just spend one uh, second to talk about this. <laughs> it's um, building machine learning systems by synthesis. After today, most of uh, the community here has been spending time to manually build these amazing systems, uh, including machine learning systems. But going forward, we also want to leverage the power of AI deep learning to help us to uh, in automating some of the parts of building these um, systems. So um, my group, we also have been working in the area of program synthesis, how to use AI and deep learning to teach computers how to write code. And also at uh, ICML this year, we also have a workshop on program synthesis uh, that uh, you can check it out if you are interested. And also, there are, synthesis is actually an amazing lens where you can look at every problem, problem they are all, uh, you something can be viewed as synthesis problem. So including model synthesis, we want to automatically search for the best machine learning model and architecture. Uh, so Google has done some great work in this space, uh, as an example. And also, uh, in the near future, we are also going to see um, some of the first uh, area where synthesis will show uh, its power is in the area of optimization, how we can use optim optimization, uh, how we can use AI and machine learning to uh, automatically come up with better optimization methods, including automatic performance tuning. Um, so again, I think this is a really exciting direction. Um, that's also another important um, direction, even though it's still at its early stage, but I think it's still another important direction for the machine learning systems community to keep in mind. Thank you. Um, this is John working with my students.